Well, praise the Lord, folks. Hey, this is James Wilcutt coming back live one more time. Uh, the, law saw, the Lord saw it fit for me to be able to get on here. And it's good to be back with you on the Good Fight broadcast. Amen. It's Wednesday night. It's 7 o'clock. And we are going to continue to fight the good fight of faith, amen, by taking up the cross and denying self. Hallelujah. That's the way it's done. That's the fight that we are to be engaged in all the time, everywhere, at every moment, amen. That's the place where we are fighting the good fight of faith, keeping faith anchored in what Christ done for us on the cross, amen, and it's a privilege to be uh, back on here, I wasn't on here last Friday, uh, I, I had a lot going on, but no, nevertheless, the Lord saw it fit for me to have another opportunity tonight, amen, this Friday, to be able to get on here and to encourage each and every one of you to continue to look to Jesus uh, the author and the finisher of our faith. And I just want to encourage you tonight to get your Bibles down, open up your Bibles and read along with me. Hey, it's good to see every one of you tonight. Praise God for each and every one of you that's logged on. And uh, I hope you have your uh, spiritual ears on and uh, are uh, enable uh, to uh, endure amen sound doctrine and uh just continue to move forward in christ amen some things that i'm going to say tonight no doubt is needful for the body the paul said that i say these things not to harm you all uh, but to uh, encourage you to build you up in your most holy faith amen so let's get started tonight if you have your bibles i want you to open up to the book of first peter amen first peter hallelujah chapter two amen starting i want to start let's just start in chapter two right there in verse one amen let's just go right there and just let the lord have his way in each and every one of us as we hear the word let it uh do what it wants to do it's uh first peter chapter two Starting in verse 1, amen, let's go there and just open up and let the Lord uh, begin to witness to us, amen, uh, hallelujah. So here we go, it says, therefore lay aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. These things that uh, are corrupt in the heart of man can be laid aside. But it's, it's so much not you laying them aside within your own power and within your own might, but it's that you have been crucified unto those things. Amen? By taking up the cross and denying self and following Jesus, the Jesus of the scriptures. Therefore, now the power of God is able to do exactly what it's promised. And that's to give us victory over these things that so easily corrupts and besets us. Amen. So in verse 2, it says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby continue jesus said unless you continue in the word you cannot be my disciple he also said unless you forsake all things amen you cannot be my disciple forsaking all things and continuing in his word is mean not to be distracted not be uh, uh, wishy-washy, not being uh, uh, so easily moved when things are going on in your midst and to get you off focus of what Christ has done for you at Calvary, amen, through the death through his death, that you, uh, amen, may have all the benefits that God desires you to have, which only comes through what Christ has done for us 
at the cross. Amen. It says, to whom, it says, in verse 3, it says, if so be you have, you have tasted. It says, if so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming as unto a living stone, Christ is that rock. Disallow in he was disallowed indeed of men. That means men uh refused him, they rejected him, those of Israel rejected him, you know, when they showed up on the you know uh, and I understand that they locked the Jews that followed Jesus uh, outside the temple gate. And when Jesus stood in the courts of Pilate, they said, "Get you know, we have no king but Caesar." I understand that there was though that there were some Jews there that did follow Jesus, but the great large majority of them rejected Jesus, who he was and what he would come to do on the cross. Amen. They didn't understand, but thank God, the Lord, uh, he got a few. And uh, when it's all said and done, he Israel will eventually cry out to the Lord Jesus. Jesus, amen, and and recognize him as the one true Messiah, which he is and shall ever be, amen. The one true Lord of lords and King of kings is that Jesus, amen, the one who loved us and gave himself for us, hallelujah. What a great thing that is to know uh, exactly uh, that he is the one that all the counsel of God is ready resting upon his shoulders, amen, what he done for us. And he says, he says, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen, listen to this in verse four, and this is First Peter chapter two, verse four, for y'all that are just now coming on. And it says, he says, but chosen of God and precious, hallelujah, but chosen of God and and precious, hallelujah. And in verse five, it says, you also as living stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ, acceptable to God. You're the only way, the only way that anyone is acceptable to God. This is scripture. Read it. It's there. Amen. It's written. Hallelujah. He says acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Christ, hallelujah. Jesus Christ, when it says Jesus Christ, that is placing Christ and him crucified as the author of all things, amen. When I see Jesus Christ, that is Jesus and his death. That's what made him Christ, hallelujah. That's what made him the author of my faith and the author of your faith. If you're believing, as the scriptures tells us to believe, which is on what Christ and in what Christ has done for us through his death. Amen. This is good. Praise God. I love the word of God. The word of God always comforts. It always edifies. It always builds and it always rebukes and corrects amen and i love it because i have to eat it first i have to let these things be settled in my own heart in order to be able uh to give these uh things out amen and verse six it says where wherefore also it is con contained in the scriptures behold i lay in zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him shall not be confused. 
found. And these are some of the things that I'm fixing to get into where the Bible shows us. Let's go back and let's read this uh, verse 6 one more time. Let's get a feel of what it's saying here and what it means. Amen. It says, Wherefore also it is contained in the Scriptures. It's in the scriptures. It is in Christ and him crucified. All this that this is pointing to. It says, behold, I lay in Zion a chief corner stone. Elect, precious, hallelujah. And it says, and he who believes in him. He who believes in him, Christ and him crucified, shall not be confound. And I looked at this, this word confound. And it's, and the word confound means mixed up with something else so that the individual elements become difficult to distinguish. Let me tell you something. If you begin to get wrapped up in the things of this world again, being uh, once again entangled in that yoke of bondage, what happens is uh, your lifestyle begins to have a worldly look rather than Christ being manifested in your life, which will ultimately cause the babe in Christ, the new uh, uh, adverse, the new, uh, you know, one has been born again, uh, that is, that, that is uh, growing in this grace and knowledge, what happens is you begin to uh, cause that individual to stumble, amen? Even though you may be preaching, what's right is the life that you're living uh, in this world lining up with what you're preaching, hallelujah. Yes, the, the, the new convert, that's right, Brother Jonathan, praise God. The new convert, we don't want to cause any, and even those that may be in the faith and have been in the faith for a while, we don't want to cause them to stumble with our lifestyle. That means with what I am doing with what Christ has died to give me. Amen. Let's go on to verse 7. Hallelujah. It says, To be not, com they, it says, They shall not be confound. That means they shouldn't be mixed up again with this world. That's what that means right there. They shouldn't be mixed up. They shouldn't have a worldly look about themselves. And you say, well, what do you mean a worldly look? What is a worldly look? I'm going to tell you something. Anything that causes one to not recognize, there should be a distinct set apart fruit working in that man of God who is taking up the cross that no doubt that the world is going to know and everybody that you meet is going to know that there is something different about this man or this woman. There is something that is just something that's different and that should be in the lifestyle of the believer always. Amen. You should be a set apart people of God as in everything you do. Not just in your teachings, but your lifestyle in this world, among other believers, among those that ain't even believers. Amen. And we're going to get to that. Hallelujah. In verse 7, it says this, Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. Hallelujah. He is precious. He, unto those who believe, he is precious. What do you mean he's precious? What he did at the cross is precious, hallelujah. 
It's better than silver or gold. It's better than anything this world has ever had to offer. And I'm going to tell you something. I've tried everything that the world has to offer. And it all came up short. Amen. Everything that this world has ever promoted and propagated, it has all fell short until this man, hallelujah, showed up. When he showed up by faith, when grace came, when faith came, hallelujah, a victory came, amen. Peace came, hallelujah. Fa oh, hallelujah. And there is nothing in the world Nothing in this world that can ever take place of what Christ has done for you at the cross to give you all that you need in this life. Amen. All that you need is to simply deny self, take up the cross and follow Jesus. This means to exclusively Put your faith in what Christ has done for you through his death and you being united with him. If you'll do that, the Bible says he will be precious unto you. Hallelujah. He will be precious unto you. And it says, but unto them who be disobedient. The stone which the builder disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Even to them who stumble at the word, being disobedient, Whereunto also they are appointed. Means that they are appointed to the judgment of God. Because they are stumbling at the word. You won't stumble at the word. And, and, and God's commandments won't be grievous unto you. If you'll take up the cross. Amen. Whereby Paul said. Whereby I am crucified. Unto this world, and this world is crucified unto me. That's what he said over in Galatians 6 and 14. He says, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. This world does not have any more luster. In my eyes, amen. This world has no more, uh, no more pull in my life now. I, my affections are set on those things which are above, which sit at the right hand of God because the Redeemer, the one and only Jesus Christ, the man, the, 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 the day star, hallelujah, has arised in my heart, hallelujah. He has my heart now. He has my diligent. He has preeminence in my life now. And there is nothing in this world that is going to rob him from me, amen, or is going to get me distracted so long as I keep looking to what Christ has done for me through his death. Now, as I, I want to keep, now the stumbling, the rock of stumbling, because the cross does want the, the because the cross crucifies the flesh and changes the very heart of man. This is why man stumble at the cross because they really don't want everything dealt with. And I'm going to tell you something. The cross will deal with everything in your life that's not of God. It will deal with it. Now, what you do with what Christ has done for you at the cross is up to you. He will not go against your free will uh, your your free will agent your your more your your free will of uh, of making your own decision he will not force himself on you he will not make you believe 
But if you look to Jesus Christ, the Bible says that he will give, if you will turn at his reproof, that he will give you his spirit and he will teach you his word, which is righteousness. Amen. Which is righteousness, which is what Christ done for us. And I'm going to tell you something. Listen, the longer that you refuse to exclusively take up this cross, the harder your, your heart will become to the gospel. And you will begin to pull away from those that are doing exactly what God has called them to do, which is to preach this gospel without leaven, without fear, and without compromise. Amen. You'll begin to pull away from them, and you'll begin to give your ears to those that are preaching a broader message. You'll find you'll wind up being as uh, those prophets over in Second King, where they told Elijah. It says, and over in. Second King chapter 6, it says, And the sons of the prophets said unto Elijah, Behold now, the place where we dwell with you is too straight for us. It's too straight for us. The place where we dwell with you, the place where you dwell with Jesus is found at the cross being crucified with him, that place will always be too straight for the fleshly man. That place will always be too straight for the fleshly man. Only a crucified man can be at the cross. No other man can be there. Because the cross was made to crucify you with Jesus Christ. To create a new man. Amen. And when that takes place. Listen to what verse 9 says. In 1 Peter chapter 2. And it says. But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. And a holy nation. A peculiar people. Amen. Listen, that's not just speaking of Israel. It does, it is it is speaking of Israel, but it's not just speaking of Israel. Yeah, the Jews first but and the Gentiles, but it's speaking to whosoever will believe. Amen. That you listen to what he says, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out. Glory be to God, who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. That you shall give praise. What is That don't mean just singing and lifting your hands. And I understand that there's nothing wrong with that too. But to give him praise is that you with your entire life is to represent what Jesus done for you at Calvary. Serve him with true diligence. Serve him. Without fear of being persecuted, without fear of being whatever this world is going to do to you and those who follow the ways of the world. Amen. He said with praise, hallelujah. He said, show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Light, amen, which in past times you were not a people. Oh, praise God. I wasn't even a people before he came into my heart. I wasn't nothing, neither were you. But now, hallelujah, he's all oh, glory to God. Uh, but now, and that's exactly what the scripture says too, which in past time, it says, which in past times were not a people, but are now the people of God. Hallelujah. Which has not obtained mercy 
but now have obtained mercy. You have obtained mercy through what Christ has done for you at the cross if you will keep your faith there and allow Christ to continue to conform you into his image and not the image of this world and quit giving your ears to those that are making excuses for you to mangle and dangle with the things of the world and being worldly. Amen. Let me tell you something. It's not, now's not a time for you, my, my, my brothers and sisters, to be living a life in this nation that is a life of worldliness. And what do you, and I understand you, most of you saying, what do you mean worldliness? Listen, if your life isn't an example to those around you, that you have been crucified with Christ and the affections and the lust thereof. Galatians 5 and 24. And ye, it says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Amen. Let us not be desirers of vain glory, provoking one another or envying one another. Amen. Let us not give space to anything that's going to cause other Christians or other young people converts to stumble amen especially you who are of uh, uh, of uh, of the faith of this gospel that's been in this for a while we don't mangle with the world to try to win the world i don't i can't drink liquor with the drunk to save the drunk and i can't uh uh present myself worldly to gain the world. Amen. I have to stay anchored in what Christ done for me at the cross that I might through the power of God be able to declare and preach this gospel in the power that it was uh, made uh, given to us to draw men unto Christ, amen? That's what God desires in each and every one of our life. And I want to tell you this. Now that you are in Christ and now that you are walking in the Spirit, let your lifestyle, everything you do, that goes for men and women alike. And I'm going to tell you something. I, listen, and, and I'm not preaching law when I say this, and I know that some of you are so stuck on, well, he's preaching law. He's trying to hold us to this. Let me tell you something. There's nothing wrong with women wearing jeans. There's nothing wrong with women having lipstick on and eyelashes glued to their lids and, and, and makeup. There's, I'm not speaking on those things, but there is a fine line in between that. You hear me? There is such thing as clothes that may be too short, and there's some clothes that might be too tight, that might be giving off the wrong example before other, and that goes for men and women both. Now, I'm not, now, now don't read in between the lines here. God can show you how you ought to present and possess your body, possess your body and your tabernacle. God can do those things, but don't use the grace of God for occasion of the flesh either, amen. He desires that you represent him everywhere, every, everything you do, amen. Now, does that mean, you know, uh, I see ministers get on there and they don't preach because they got on a, a, a jacket? No, that's not what I'm saying. I wear a jacket when I preach because I desire to wear a jacket when I preach. I'm not held by no law, and I'm not saying you're wrong because you don't wear a jacket. Oh, my goodness. No, that's not what I'm saying. Get off of it. But I'm talking about 
I don't think that it's right for a man to wear a muscle shirt and preach at the same time. That, that, I'm going to just tell you that. I don't think that the Lord done that. I don't think that the Lord was showing off his physique the whole time he was preaching. I think that he was preaching and he was presenting himself as he ought to that was pleasing to God. Amen. And, and I, I, I'm just saying, I'm not preaching law, but man, let, let's get real here, okay? We're not, I'm not... I'm trying to get you to see some things, and I'm, I'm going to show you these things in Scripture. Verse 11, let's get to it. It says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, sustain from fleshly lusts which wars against the soul. Those fleshly lusts that war against the soul, having your conversation, your lifestyle, honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they have beheld, Glorify God in the day of visitation. It means the day that they get God, that God shows up in their heart and receives the grace of God. When they get converted, the day that He shows up, and He's going to show up by your preaching, Amen. By your preaching, Hallelujah. By the preaching of Christ and them crucified when he shows up in their hearts. So you definitely don't want to cause one to stumble by uh, appearing to be worldly before one and confessing Christ at the same time. Then, listen, that's what most of the church is doing right now, that it's okay. Listen, I'm... Mm -mm -mm. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren and sisters, by the mercy of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, in your mind has to get off. Your mind needs to be reset. You, you, well, I got Christ, but I still want to hang on to this, 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 this luxurious lifestyle trying to look like Kim Kardashian and Arnold Schwarzenegger and all these others out here that you've had in your carnal mind from the time you didn't know Christ, amen. That shouldn't be in your heart and in your life anymore. You should have the mind of Christ by the renewing of the mind. Glory to God. It says that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That perfect will of God. The Bible tells us to sustain. That word sustained, abstained, is to is is to retrain, I'm sorry, is to restrain oneself from doing anything that would be displeasing unto God or would cause the brethren to stumble. Anything that would cause the brethren to stumble. Listen, I, listen, uh, and I know the Bible says we've let those things go that are behind, but I can remember Man, when when the big preachers come to town and they would set up the big tables and, and sell their merchandise to uh, propagate the people, to make money off the people, to pay for their luxurious lifestyle that God really didn't even desire for them to, to live. Filthy lucres. That's what they were. And that's what they are still today. But thank God, God has showed us 
the truth. And some of us has realized it. Some of us has actually hearkened unto what the Lord has shown us and began to depart from those who would cause the body to stumble by doing these things that were ungodly. Amen. Praise God. The Bible tells us also that in Ephesians chapter 5, 15 and 17, it says, See thee then, see thee then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but wise, redeeming the times because the days are evil. Therefore be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And the will of the Lord is for you, my friend, to be a partaker of, to, to always be brought to the death, whereby that the life of Christ might be made manifest in your body, in your life. Not worldliness. Not things that, uh, that, 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 that every, that every person in the world's doing and that the modern church is doing. But you present yourself as a living sacrifice. Suffering the reproach, entering into the reproach of Christ. And I know the church don't like to hear these type of preachings. They don't. And it's because this place is too straight for you. Because you want something that you can hang on to. But not be offensive to the world. You want something that you can hang on to and it doesn't cause an offense and cause you to be persecuted and cause you to be lampooned and lambasked and talked about and made fun of. That's, I understand that. No one wants that. You did that. Jesus didn't want that, but Jesus wanted the will of the Father to be fulfilled. And if you love God, you will see that that's precious, amen. And no matter what you have to do, that you, through faith, will continue this race and to continue to fight this good fight of faith and not draw back, amen. That's what God desires. Even in James 1 and verse uh, 26 and 27, the Bible says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their afflictions. This doesn't mean that I'm going uh, uh, to a place where, uh, where it says fatherless and widows. Those that have lost their husbands and children that have lost their fathers. This is speaking of those that are in the world without God. That don't know this gospel. That have been uh, uh, mind uh, tricked by religion. And hasn't really truly entered in to true biblical faith, which is Christ and him crucified and what he has done to set them apart and bring them out of darkness into his marvelous light. Many in the church today have a uh, something other than the gospel that the Bible truly preaches and teaches. And the days we're living in, my friends, Brothers and sisters, these, these things are not going to get any better. The Bible declares that in the days, in the last days, that things will wax, that men will wax worse and worse, going about deceiving, being deceived, and deceiving others. Where is the deception? <coughs> The deception is when you begin to broaden the narrow way through your ministry and your lifestyle. The Bible says in first in James 1 and 26 and 27, it says, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. It's not God's desire that you ever 
Present yourself as being worldly ever again now that you are in Christ. For we are not of this world. We are of the Father. We're not of this world. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 41. Jesus said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And that takes me back right over to Galatians 5 and 24, where it says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. We have crucified the flesh. We no longer have to give space to flesh as the church and as the apostate church and as 99.9% .9 of all churches preach that you will always be subjected to the flesh. Let me tell you something. No, you, you don't have to. You don't have to. The Bible says that we have been crucified. That we are dead. In, that to, to reckon yourself to be ye dead. Unto sin and alive unto God through Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us, and, and I understand, listen, I, and I hope and pray that you don't, don't sit here and think that I am preaching law. Listen, Christ tells us that how that we ought to operate in this tabernacle. He is well able to lead and guide you. And if he is leading and guide you, there are some things that you should and should not be doing. But I understand that God has to be the one to show you that. But it also lays upon those that you're sitting under. Let me tell you, the minister that you're sitting under that's not willing to address these things is telling me right there that he's that he's cowering back because he's supposed to dress with them things. Do you think I'm going to let my kid walk out this door and go to school with a skirt that's so short? Come on, I ain't going there. Do you think I'm going to let that? You think I'm just going to let my kids wear whatever they want to wear and act? As a, any way they want to act and go wherever they want to go. No, there has to be a place to where you stand up and say, Hey, look, I love you. And you know, you need to be conscious of what you're doing as you're confessing to have the, have Jesus Christ in your heart and in your life. You ought to desire that people see him not only in what you speak, but also how you live. Amen. God forbid that we live a life that is contrary to what the scriptures tells us we ought to live, which is simply by faith. But if we're living by faith, we're going to do right. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse three says this. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you sub abstain from fornication that every one of you that includes James Wilcut that don't just include those ones that I'm preaching to out here on Facebook brothers and sisters that, I'm not I'm not eliminating myself from anything that I'm sitting here preaching I'm eating this as well Amen. It says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Honoring who? Honoring God through your lifestyle, the way you live, the way you act, the way you conduct. Everything you do on social media needs to be as you do it unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 4 says, yeah, that was uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 and 4, and this is 5. It says, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which knew not God. 
which knew not God. We are to have this precious faith, not only in word, but also in deed, amen, living as we have as we live in the Spirit, therefore let us walk in the Spirit. But you know the Bible declares that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. The knowledge that you need tonight is found in what Christ done for you at the cross. The know-how to know what to do or how to do the what to do is found in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he is well able to teach you. He is well able to correct you. He's well able to, to reprove you. He's well able to do these things. But are you seeking him? Or are you seeking a man's approval on your life? I don't care what man puts his approval on you. This right here, my friend, is what approves, what God approves, which is a life that is united with Christ by faith, that is producing fruit. Do we need, do you know the Bible declares that those who do not, that have not, who have, have become to the place of not being a uh, bearing fruit the bible declares that that branch will be hewn down and cast into the fire that person that is just going through the motions and declaring everything but that life that that person's living is not an example of christ likeness let me tell you something my friend that's a place where you have become unfruitful. Amen. That's a place where you have become worldly. You have been, you've given your diligence and your fleshly lusts and desires back into the things of the world. And they're not of the things of God. And, and you, you say, man, how, how can you sit there and say that? Cause, but the Bible says that in first John chapter two, do I need to take you back there again? Man, you, 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 y'all are, the, and when I say y'all, I'm speaking to my brothers and sisters. You know these things. I have not need to remind you the Bible, the, Paul said this. I mean, John said this. Glory to God. Let me get back to where it was at. John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2 and 15. Listen to what he says here. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That is sound doctrine. But you know why you don't want to give, and I'm not, I'm not speaking to anybody directly. I'm just speaking to those that have an ear to hear. The reason that you have a problem with this, these type of teachings and sayings is because you really haven't let go of the things of this world and counted them all but dung, amen? Because you still want to maintain that status of class of people in this world to fit in with the world, amen? I don't fit in this world anymore. The Bible says I'm not of this world anymore. I be of Christ, amen. Crucified from this world and this world crucified unto me. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ now lives in me. It says for all that is in the world and the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye. And here it is. And the pride of of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. For the world passes away and the lust thereof, 
But he who does the will of God abides forever. But he who does the will of God, he said he abides forever. The one who keeps Christ and him crucified, reigning in their heart, denying self, taking up the cross and going on with Jesus, that one who is enduring the afflictions of this life, being crucified with Christ, that one who endures to the very end, the Bible says he abides, he will abide forever. That means that because of what Christ done for me, him abiding in my heart now, that he has given me everlasting life with him in glory. And the life that I now live while I'm present in this world, not of it, but I'm in the world. I'm not of the world anymore. Hallelujah. Thank God neither do, neither are you if you've been born again. Neither are you if you are truly determined not to know anything but Christ and Him crucified. Neither are you. You're not of this world anymore. So abstain from the things of this world and press in to the things of God and let Him do what needs to be done in your life and your living. Amen. And He's well able to do it. Glory to God. He's promised us that He'll never leave us and He'll never forsake us. That He is well able to to commit and continue that good work unto that great day. Amen. That great day is coming very soon, my friends. The day of Jesus returning is going to be here like a thief in the night. I hope and pray to God that you're found in the faith when he comes. I hope and pray to God that you're found with your faith anchored in what Christ done for you at the cross and turning from everything else and giving total preeminence to what he's done for you. Amen. Love you each and every one of you. Before I go, I want to give everyone, I've always give people the opportunity if they feel led of the Lord to give to the Lord. You can give to the Lord uh, right here through this ministry, Crossway Ministries. Amen. Uh, if you feel led of the Lord to give to this work, uh, you can do so by going to www crosswayministries.org you can hit the donate button it will walk you through how to give right there on uh paypal and uh, it's not hard to do if you can't give that away and you want to mail in a money order or a check whatever the lord leads you to do you do that amen you can do that by making that check or money order out to crossway ministries and you could send that to P.O. Box 9097, Greenwood, Mississippi, 38930. Amen. And uh, I can promise you, the the work that's being done here, this is not to pad in anybody's pocket. It's to further for the gospel. Amen. Love each and every one of you. God bless you. Uh, if you listen. If you don't have a cross preaching church in your region or in your uh hometown and and you live close to the greenville greenwood area uh i I would uh employ you to uh get your family together and get them in a cross preaching bible believing church amen get them to the place where they can hear the undulterated word of God sound doctrine. Uh, the doctrine of the Bible, uh, those wholesome words that uh, the Bible says uh, that we ought to be preaching and 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 teaching, amen, uh, which is Christ and Him crucified. That's what we need to hear. That's where we grow, and that's where we continue to fight the good fight of faith. If you don't have a home church, Please come to come to Crossway Ministries and be a part of what God's doing right there. Pastor Wayne and Debbie Voss will uh, listen. Uh, great people of faith, Amen. The, the, what a blessing that church and that uh, whole family there. Everyone there has been a blessing to me and my family, and they would be a blessing to you too because they're in the one that's able 
to bless you. Amen. They're in Christ as I am in Christ and as you are in Christ, hoping and praying that you are. Come and be a part of what we're, what God's doing uh, at Crossway Ministries. It's not hard to find. If you live uh, on uh, the, the Greenville side, you can go like you're going toward Greenwood and or right after you past the flashing yield line at Itabena. There's a little church right there on the right-hand side, Crossway Ministries, white building, old wood cross right there on the front uh, of the building, two glass doors, can't miss it. If you're coming from Green Wood, headed to Greenville, it's on the left after you pass Viking and Pepsi Cola right there. You can't miss it. We would love to have you. Load up your family, get them there. God bless each and every one. I hope that I've said something tonight that would encourage you to keep fighting the good fight of faith and to abstain from anything that would cause you to stumble or that would cause anyone in your family or in your church or in your community to stumble or anywhere else. Amen. Love you, each and every one of you. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Love you.